aja kami tidak keberatan dengan adanya impes masuk hmm. tapi harus memperhatikan masyarakat yang punya wilayah jangan berhenti kalau belum dikasih nenennya <laughs> ya gitulah kita sama pemerintah itu ya. kami supaya kami bisa ikut maju seperti negara bapak juga Jerman bisa bikin pesawat ya kita paling tidak ya ikut pasang pasaknya <laughs> itulah malah <laughs> yang kita sangat dambakan negara hmm. Basically what I learned is that every year the companies open a new so-called block within their concession area that they then harvest within that year. And usually the months January up to March are the months in, in which they open the new blocks, build the roads into the forest and then harvest up to December. And what you essentially have is a system whereby a forest goes to a logging concession for 30 years um, they can log certain trees of certain sizes in certain areas mm -hmm. for those 30 years and then it's set aside for another 30 years before they start again. And to my knowledge, not a single concession has gone through that cycle of 30 years logging, 30 years standby, and then going back to it. Instead, you've got 30 years logging, and then they clear it all to put a plantation in. Mm -hmm. Ini kan ini kan irkati 2010 ya. Di 2011 ini ketika operasi 2011 dimulai, kim-kim ini dipindahkan lagi, dirancang seperti ini, supaya hmm. bisa ditarik pakai traktor. Rumah ini ya? Iya rumah ini. Tarik aja. Ditarik pakai traktor. <laughs> Jadi tidak perlu lagi dibuat rumah yang baru kan? Tidak ada roda di di bawah nggak? Tidak ada roda. Tidak ada tarik. Roda. tarik aja. Tarik ini aja. Tarik aja. 2011 itu berapa ribu? 35. 35 ribu target. Hmm. Tahun ini 35 ribu meter kubik. Logging in Indonesia has always been extremely lucrative. Extremely lucrative. And it could continue to be so. Um, it could be sustainably managed long term and, and remain extremely lucrative. However, there's a lot of competition for resources and Often, yeah, people put quick profits first um, beyond the long-term view. Now, who's actually monitoring that situation? Who's policing that situation? Well, you don't see a lot of that. It should be said at this point that the logging industry in Kalimantan is about to collapse, simply because not only in environmental terms, but also economically, it's utmost unsustainable. So there's a lot of wastage in the industry, and I, I, uh, possibly that's improved. Um, there seems to be a disparity. There's, there's no real, um, there's no real equalizer that, that mm -hmm. forces this company that's operating with yeah. very bad practices to, to improve its game. Yeah. It's still very, very lax. Um, so when we talk about forests, we have to not be too emotive, but to really look at what is there, mm -hmm. and and say, well, primary forests, obviously we love them. But uh, limited logging in, in, in various landscapes um, is quite acceptable, yeah. I mean, in the West we cleared our forests a long, long time ago. Um, you know, we've been, I've been arguing since the beginning I was here, sustainably logged forest is fine. Forest cover on land, even if that forest is logged quite badly, it's mm -hmm. still maintaining the biodiversity. Rampant illegal logging, chopping everything down and pulling it out doesn't work. So, sustained exploitation would have worked, could have worked, 
Unfortunately, they destroyed everything as well. Now, to get a good sustainable system, you have to up your prices. You need to start processing the timber in country. So you don't send raw materials abroad, but you make the furniture here and then export it. You get a much higher price mm. and you employ more people. There's lots of ways to do it, um, but it's very difficult to do it in backward third world places. And these mm. places tend to just develop when they start selling coal and gold and rubber and oil palm. Mm. And then you go, ah, oh, what if they've done it properly? Right. In Jakarta, I got in touch with a businessman who used to be involved in timber trafficking in the Rio province in Sumatra. He told me that they used to smuggle timber from Sumatra to Malaysia where it got labeled as Malaysian wood and then smuggled it back into Indonesia where it could then be exported to Europe or Eastern Asia as legally harvested timber. Basically what he made clear to me is how corrupt the Indonesian economy really is. Once he tried to export legally harvested timber from Indonesia to China, However, the harbor police was so used to being bribed that they simply didn't let the legal timber pass. Basically, the corruption in Indonesia forces businessmen to do it illegally because that's always the easiest and fastest way. However, it also forces the business to basically grab and run. They take the timber and want to get it out of Indonesia as quick as possible because every single step that this timber would undergo within the country would involve corruption and thus further costs by having to bribe officials, etc. Which really makes it impossible for timber to be processed within Indonesia, which would in fact solve a lot of problems because it would bring more employment, it would enable wood products to be sold at high values. Let's get into politics. RED stands for Reduced Emissions Through Deforestation and Forest Degradation. And basically the idea is that northern countries that don't have very much forest left pay countries in tropical zones like Indonesia, the Congo or Central and South America, that these countries get paid for not cutting down their forests. So basically, northern countries pay for avoided deforestation in the tropical zones. The Indonesian government has already received $1 billion dollars by the government of Norway under the condition that the Indonesian government passes a logging moratorium by 1st of January 2011. This two-year logging moratorium would mean that within those two years, no more logging concessions could be issued. In principle, it's a very simple idea that makes the forest worth more standing than cut down. On, the, on that level, it sounds very simple, but as soon as you start to look into the details of who's actually going to get the money, where the money's going to come from, whether or not it's a carbon trading mechanism, it all becomes extremely complicated. Indonesia is one of the richest biodiversity in the world. Mm. It is not only belong to Indonesia, it is belong to the world. If we lose it, the world will lose it. Because you destroy it only 300 years ago in Europe. Well, 200 years in America. We, we are following only you, you see. We are following only you. But we still allocate 60% of our land for forest. But we do not get any compensation for that yet. The sooner we have the compensation, the faster we can really manage it. I mean, I'm actually quite critical of the whole right process. But um, one of the interesting things is that what it has done is opened up a huge debate about deforestation. 
it has actually created a space where we can start talking about corruption, illegal logging, 